Her account says, can you do a video on the CBA deal later? Sure, I can. Um, but And I, I can explain it for you. But real quick, I can tell it to you now. I mean, more or less. Here, let me, let me, since you're in here and you specifically requested that, let me show you right now. And hopefully this will answer your question because I don't actually find it to be that like surprising, you know, or anything like that. This is not a shocking thing. It was totally expected. We all knew that the players were going to opt out of this deal. And it seems like everybody is going into it with good faith based on what even the league has put out there publicly. Here you go. All right. This is from the the WNBA's account. Here's what you need to know. CBA 101. Building a league that works for the long term. Let's break it down. Okay. What's the collective bargaining agreement? An agreement between the WNBA and its owners and the WNBA PA, the labor union for players, establishes the rules of the road for the league owners, teams, and players, governs items like salary caps, season schedule, travel, player benefits, and more. What's an opt-out? A provision in the CBA that lets either the WNBA or the WNBA PA end the CBA early, begins the negotiation process for a new CBA. Recently, the WNBA opted out, meaning the current CBA now ends after the 2025 WNBA season instead of after the 2027 WNBA season. So that's the key point right there. They chose to, in the last one, in the current CBA, they had an opt-out in there as part of the deal. They chose to enact that opt-out to get out of the CBA, which means the current collective bargaining agreement runs until the end of next season. So nothing changes for next season. It runs through the end of next season. But it was signed to run through the 2027 season. Instead, the players decided to opt out now, which was the only move they could make. What happens now? No impact on the 20, like I just said, the WNBA and WNBA PA work together on a new CBA that is fair for all and lays the foundation for growth and success for years to come. Goal, new CBA by the start of the 2026 season. So it sounds like everybody's on the same page here, which means it's probably going to get done. Um, there are all finer details that will be argued, right? Like scheduling quirks. I, Brianna Stewart said it last night in the post-game presser, um, more or less. She said, all right, uh, we got to figure out how to make it so we get more rest time between games. That could be something that's negotiated in there. The real truth of the CBA is that it's mostly about the rev share or the money, right? Like, and a lot of these, I think the NBA's is basically 50, 50. So what's going to happen is the players are going to fight for a fairer share of the pie as they see it. And that pie is getting larger, which will then eventually lead to higher player salaries. And you've already seen the, the negotiations sort of play out in the media. I think, with that report that came from the New York Post about the WNBA losing money this year. It's been losing money. You know, like the NBA has subsidized it. But the article also doesn't really tell you anything because the new money has not come in yet. The money from the growth has not come in yet. And that's going to be what changes the equation, the new money that comes in. And that's going to happen. Obviously, you saw more people at the games. Obviously, you saw the meteorites deal, which basically 3 x what they were getting. More, meaning what the, the networks were paying them to broadcast the games has gone up three times. And they have that locked in for 10 years or something, and they can get out of that in three years. Meaning in three years, they can opt out of that and try to negotiate better. But basically, you're going to look for the players to fight for as big a revenue share as they can get, as close to 50-50 as they can get, and then other small details that need to be worked out. But the reason that the leverage for them has been this explosive growth this season. And they really, you know, Caitlin Clark in many ways should be thanked for that. If we're being real about it, as I've said. So that's more or less what's going on. Um, maybe I'll clip this specifically um, if, you know, if that's helpful. But that's what's going on with the, the WNBA opt out and the CBA. They opted out to start the negotiation process for a new one. I would bet they have a new CBA in place by the end of next season. There will be some negotiating back and forth between through the media, behind closed doors, all that stuff. But it's really just because 
of the success of the league. And ultimately, both parties should benefit from the success of the league.